Welcome to I Innovate, a podcast about innovation and entrepreneurship. We actually interviewed Heidi Roizen, who's a very prominent venture capitalist out in Silicon Valley, and she has a lot of expertise on consumer products. And we gave her the opportunity to ask um, Virgin Galactic a question about your strategy, about what you're trying to do today in the market. And her question was, how much of this is going to be integral to Virgin's business going forward as opposed to more of a brand play and something to get media attention? Mm. Um, to be honest with you, it's when, when I first brought the idea to Richard, um, I, you know, I had a keen eye to the fact that it, it was um, very, very good news for the brand. It, it said a lot about what we were as a company and as a, as a group. And the sort of things that Richard was able to do, or wanted to do, not able to do, had the drive to do. Mm. So it does say great things about uh, uh, the group, but um, I was actually um, very, very comforted to find all the way through the process that Richard wasn't just interested in getting a name on the face, uh, first spaceship, which is you know important to him as well, but also to make a viable business from this. Mm. And that also what he wanted to do was go point to point in the future. He has now five airlines around the world, um, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Express, uh, Virgin uh, Blue in Australia, we, are, we now run the national airline of Nigeria, um, so we're accustomed to risk, um, and we're just about to start Virgin America, um, which hopefully will get going sometime in March next year. Um, with five airlines, uh, we understand um, transportation, we understand operations, implementation, and also package. We understand the efficiencies that we would like to gain by doing things an awful lot more quickly, and what people want. We believe that there is a huge market for people wanting to go from uh, New York to Singapore in 45 minutes or from London to Sydney in the same time frame. Um, this also creates some incredible dynamics with the economies that you get from the, the investment that you have in that hardware. At the moment I fly a, an A340-600, um, it takes 24 hours for a return trip from London to Los Angeles. Now we employ a $140 million aircraft to do that. If I'm going there in an hour, turning that vehicle around in an hour and coming back an hour later, I can affect eight times the efficiency uh, from one craft doing exactly the same trip. That's quite a different dynamic. Anyway, we'd love to find out if we can do this, and it's not just a brand play. This could very, very, um, very, very much change the face of transportation on the face of the planet in the future. Now, not only, only that, because that's the, um, the stepping off point, as it were. If we can do that um, and get people around the planet and, and work into the world economies um, that are already existent, maybe we can tap into some other economies that aren't existing at the moment. For example, by creating a vehicle that does this, um, it's not much of a stretch to go because you're at all sorts of speeds to just take the vehicle into orbit. Now, if you can put manned access to space way low, um, then you can just start doing things off planet, start mining the asteroids, start having hotels in space, having a hotel on the moon. All of these things become possible when you affect uh, cost reductions in the way that we will, if we get point to point.